Well-designed object-oriented applications are made up of nicely organized parts that interact to produce a whole. These parts are the objects. We're already quite familiar with objects in the real world. Objects have identity. For example, your car is different than your friend's car. Objects have state. For example, a TV can be on or off. A glass can be empty or full. A bank account can contain a certain amount of money. But objects also have behavior. For instance, an aircraft can fly. A dog can bark. A vehicle can accelerate. The topic of this lesson is to go over some intuition about how object behavior is invoked in response to messages. Objects behave a certain way by responding to messages sent to them. The core piece in an object-oriented system are the messages. Newcomers to object orientation often have trouble thinking in terms of objects and messages. But that's really the same thing as classes and methods. The only difference is in perspective. During object design, Experienced developers think in terms of how objects will behave during runtime rather than the classes or methods they would need to write. You'll also transition into thinking of software in this way. Uh, take a moment to study the following concept. Methods defined in a class definition represent the behavior that instances of that class will have during runtime, and this behavior is invoked by sending messages to the object. Let's see an example. Let's jump into our IDE. All right, so here we are in Eclipse. This is the IDE that we'll be using in the course. Create, our, create the class called Vehicle. And it's going to have three methods on it. Let's say um, it will be able to start engine. can stop the engine and we can also accelerate. Uh, for now I'm just going to sort of stub out these methods with simple implementations uh, with just print line statements. Um, so for starting the vehicle uh, it'll just say starting my engine. Stopping my engine. accelerating myself. So in this example, all vehicle objects are capable of conducting three behaviors. Starting themselves, stopping themselves, and accelerating. And they do this when these messages are sent to them. When a vehicle object is sent a message such as start engine or stop engine, that object will respond by carrying out that behavior. So this is the actual behavior that will be carried out when the stop engine message or the stop and start engine message is sent to uh, the vehicle object. Now let's create a vehicle object. I'll create an app class and in here will just be the main method. I'll create a vehicle object. And we'll, we'll accelerate this car. Now I'm going to run this application and you'll see that, that it's showing here that it's accelerating, accelerating myself. Now if I have another object here called another car, now we can accelerate this other car as well. And when I run this, it's going to say accelerating myself twice. Understand that these two objects are, are completely different from one another. And they're capable, they're both capable of responding to the accelerate message. Now, if a client tries to send, let's say, for example, an explode message to this vehicle, nothing to worry about because this vehicle is not even capable of conducting that kind of behavior. I don't have the explode method here defined on the class. So it's not going to even 
respond to, it's not even capable of responding to such a message. Thinking in terms of objects and messages helps better understand software behavior during runtime. Let's study another example. Let me create a class called driver. Driver. And let's say we are writing a software for a racetrack system. For simplicity, this example uh, that we're going to demonstrate here is only going to have two objects, uh, a driver object and vehicle objects. We already have created the vehicle class, so now let's define behavior for this driver object. And it's going to accept a parameter of type vehicle. Call it race car. So this would allow all driver objects the capability to be able to respond to the drive message. When the driver sends the accelerate message to the vehicle object, so it's getting this uh, vehicle object as part of the parameter, let's send this car the accelerate message. The vehicle object conducts the acceleration behavior. But notice something important here. Objects can have dependencies. Think about the driver. A driver object would need a vehicle object to be able to drive. The driver depends on a vehicle object to be handed to him as part of the parameter to the drive method. Only then can he behave like he is supposed to and drive. This dependency that the driver has on a vehicle object is referred to as an association. Associations should always be organized around how the software will behave. Associations define a relationship between classes, and there can be different kinds of associations. The one we see here is known as a dependency association. The driver receives a vehicle reference only in the scope of the drive operation. So the driver is dependent on a vehicle object to be handed to it as a parameter to the drive operation. Only then can he perform the drive operation. The association is formed in terms of the scope of the operation, not the class in general. That's a dependency association. Now let's take a look at another type of association. Composition. This association is a bit more free form than the one we saw previously. Composition is exactly what it sounds like. A particular object is composed of other objects that make up a whole. And if the containing object ceases to exist, the internal parts it's composed of no longer exist either. That's composition. Now let's take a look at an example for this. Here we have a vehicle class that is composed of an engine object. If the vehicle ceases to exist, so does the engine. It wouldn't make sense for an engine to be lurking around without a vehicle object. So the engine only lives in the context of a vehicle object. Composition implies ownership. So the vehicle owns an engine object. Now the third kind of association that I want to look at is called aggregation. Aggregation differs from ordinary composition such that it does not imply ownership. Here's what I mean. Take a look at this diagram. This is called a UML diagram, and it's used to depict classes within our application. For example, in this diagram, we have three classes. We have the school department class, the course class, and a student class. And the arrows always point to the dependency. Now, you don't have to get into the details of this particular diagram just yet. We'll be going through the components of UML on an as-needed basis when we get there. But here we have a school department. And a school department can have multiple courses. And each one of those courses can have many students registered for it. The relationship between a school department and a course is a composite relationship. There's composition going on here. Because a school department can be composed of many courses. And let's say if the department closes down, the courses that were part of that department also no longer exist. 
Exist where? What do I mean by exist? I'm talking in terms of the overall application. When the application is running, during runtime, the objects that exist in the memory of the application, when the school department, for example, let's say it closes down, all of the courses that belong in that school department also cease to exist. And that's our obvious composition relationship there. The second relationship, the course and the student, this is an aggregation relationship. It does not imply ownership. Right? A course does not own a student. So if a course is canceled or removed from registration, that doesn't mean that the student no longer exists within the application. That student object can be registered for many other courses in many other departments. So in the running application, the student object can still exist independent of the particular course as well as the particular department that closes down. So this is an aggregation relationship and the relationship between the school department and the course is a composite relationship. The school department owns a course or owns many courses, but the course does not own a particular student. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. And if it doesn't, that's okay. We're going to be visiting this several more times in the course. And uh, when we code up some examples, it'll all be clear. Now, one note that I want to make about this diagram is notice this black diamond and this white diamond. This is sort of a UML detail, which I'll probably be avoiding in the course. I want to leave the UML diagram simple. This is sort of the official format for drawing associations, but we can definitely live without it to make things simpler. And for our purposes, I'll be improvising along the way.